just so everyone knows, uh, this uh, session is being recorded. Um, and it'll be available on the IEEE YouTube if you want to see it later. Okay, so uh, 9.8-7 uh, says uh, find uh, VC at T, so that's across the uh, capacitor for T greater than zero in the circuit uh, for A uh, when C is one over 18 uh, F, B when C is one over 10 F, C when C is one over 20 F. Um, I'm thinking if you guys are okay with it to just go through A. Um, it basically, all it does is changing uh, the capacitor uh, changes which um, like damping factor you have. So uh, let's just go through A. So A is when C is one over 18 F. Okay, so we start by checking what the, uh, the circuit would look like when T is less than zero. So, um, sorry, here we have T at T, T at UT. So at zero, our current source is also zero. So like an open circuit. So we have, something that looks like this. And here we have that shorted inductor. Okay, so I at zero negative, so uh, right uh, before zero is zero amps, which is equivalent to right after zero. And same thing for the voltage across the capacitor. So now, okay. It's got to figure out how to move this whiteboard down. Um, so we're going to have to redraw, uh, now at, at T is greater than zero. Um, so we have our current sur source is now two amps and we can redraw our circuit. like this. All right, so from this, um, so it does look like I'm gonna have to erase it. Give me one second, I wanna see if I can share my notes instead. Okay, you, uh, you're you not going to be doing um, chapter nine on the exam? Okay. 
chat. Oh, it's all multiple choice. Okay, so um okay, so what kind of questions? Okay, what kind of questions are you going? Do you know kind of what you guys had for the midterm? Oh, you guys didn't have, yeah, yeah, I will finish it. I'm just, sorry. I'm so sorry that it's not letting me share my notes, which I'm trying to figure out how to do, because that way I can do an unlimited, um, Page, I guess. Share screen. Okay. Okay, I think it's not working. Okay, perfect. Wow, that, I'm very sorry about that. Okay, so this is the question we had. Uh, so we have done, I will redo the four, oops, I'll redo the four, T is greater than zero, A is C one over 18 F. So we have, two amps, this, C, eight ohms, Y at T. Uh, so now we're going to do a KVL. Uh, so we have, eight i times t uh, plus vt so we're doing a loop uh, this way in the smaller corner um oh also it's really important i'm sure you guys do it but um show your uh plus and minus signs so that you don't mix it up uh when you do your uh, loops and stuff in your node uh, node analysis because I know even me I'm in my fifth year and I still mess this up like when I was doing this I messed it up so <laughs> it's really important that you write um, all of your signs okay so we have the a times it so that's your resistor times the current you have vt which is across the capacitor now you have your um, voltage across your inductor, which is uh, two derivative of IT. Uh, and now you're going to add uh, this, um, I'll just put it here, this resistor. So how we're going to do it, we're going to do it um, using nodal analysis, like kind of. So you want this current here, which is not I at T but it's I at T with this uh, two amps going in as well. So what we're gonna have is our four ohms times two amps plus I at T, which is equal to zero. Uh, so I won't do all of the writing out, uh, but I will give you the, once you do the math, just a little bit of it, you're gonna get this equation. Uh, so now we're going to sub, we know that I at T is, uh, I at T is going through the capacitor, so it's equal to C dV at T over dT, so the derivative of the voltage at the capacitor. We're going to sub it into 
this equation we had earlier. And from that, we're going to get this equation. If you ever uh, aren't understanding, uh, I'm skipping some steps just so it'll be a little bit shorter. Um, but another thing I don't recommend doing on an exam or assignments, uh, write out all your steps. Okay, so we get uh, this and of course, then we have to rewrite it so that uh, our double derivative is first. And we're basically doing a quadratic good polynomial. Cool. So now we are going to find what that is. Uh, we're going to sub in our C. Our C was 1 over 18. Uh, so we're going to do this. These all stay the same, but we have 9 via t here now and negative 72 here. So using the quadratic formula, we find our two, um, our two s's. So we get actually we find that s1 is equal to s2 and it's negative three. So when we have uh, equal and real roots, uh, that means the system is critically damped. So that's gonna tell us uh, what our uh, natural response should look like. So now we're gonna look at our forcing function. Our forcing function is constant. It's our um, two amps up here, our current source. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Is two amps. So our forcing function is a constant A. From that, uh, we can write from here, we're going to sub in our forcing function. So, so this is finding the force response of our circuit. So if you remember, um, if it was equal to zero, then there wouldn't be a forcing function but uh, there is a forcing function, as we can see, this negative 72. So uh, we have to find the forced response. Uh, from this, we sub in uh, VF at T is A, and we're going to get that A is negative eight. So our full function is our natural response, Vn at t, plus the force response, Vf at t. Um, and we know that our natural response being critically damped is of the, um, it's gonna be a, a negative the alpha t, uh, a1 t plus a2. So alpha is our S1 actually, so maybe writing S1 is better. So we're gonna have a minus a negative three T, A1 T plus A2. And then we have a our forcing function, which is negative eight. So uh, then we can find at T equals zero. So we find that V at zero is equal to zero, which we know from the first, uh, the beginning. Oh, I don't have it written here, but what we did in our last uh, on the whiteboard at the beginning. So when we saw uh, right before zero, we did that analysis. We found that V at zero is zero. And then we just uh, plug that in. So we get, And from this, we get that A2 is equal to eight. Okay, 
Uh, so now we're going to take the derivative of the at. So we're doing, this is to find um, a1 because right now we can't find it. But taking the derivative, we get this. Um, please let me know if you ever need me to skip anything, go faster, go slower. Um, and we will find that uh, at zero, we get e negative three at zero. And into that, we're going to sub a2 is equal to eight. So here we get dv at zero over dt is equal to a1 minus 24. Uh, but now we need to find what is uh, dv at zero over dt. So we're going to go back to our initial um, i at zero that we found, which we found to be zero. And we can also do the actual analysis, which is c dvt over dt. So we get, and from this, we can see that dv at zero over dt is zero. So then we can find that a1 is 24. Does that make sense for everybody? Is that good? Um, so this one had real and equal roots. B and C have, uh, so this is critically damped, those have like under damped and over damped. I also have a question if you want to do, this was a constant forcing function. I have one for a sinusoidal forcing function. Or would you guys like to move on to, what's my next question, is uh, chapter 11, which is coupled inductors. Sinusoidal, okay, cool. So for this one, I'll make a new, okay. So this is going to be, uh, okay. This is going to be uh, 9.8-4. Oh, my writing is really horrendous. Okay. Just gonna get my notes out. Okay. So the I'm going to draw out the circuit that they give us. Sorry, my circuit drawing skills are not beautiful. This is V at T. This is I at T, this is 0.5H, this is one ohm, and this is also one ohm, and I labeled these A, B. Um, okay, let me read out what the question says, 9.8-4. Um, find VT for T is greater than zero for the circuit, uh, when V at zero is equal to one volt and IL at zero is equal to uh, zero. So this is IL here. Oh, and this is one over 12 F. Okay. 
when does the Kahoot start? We were gonna do it at the end. Um, if you guys prefer, we can do it like in the middle. Uh, since this was supposed, to, this is supposed to be eight thirty to nine thirty, so we were gonna do it around nine twenty. I would say if that works for everyone. Okay, so. We were told that V at zero is equal to one volt and I at L at zero is equal to zero amps. So we're going to do a KCL at A. Uh, so I'm saying the uh, this is the voltage across the inductor minus this voltage source over uh, one amp plus our ILT plus is equal to zero. So rearranging this, we get. this equation. Uh, and we're going to call that one. Now we're going to do, uh, now we know that the voltage through uh, or over an inductor is given by this equation, which we know is so we can sub this into one. And this will give us our third equation. Yeah. So from there, we're going to do another KCL, but we're going to do it at point B. And this is what I've labeled point B up here. So we have V at T minus VL over 1 ohm plus 1 twelfth DV T over DT is equal to zero. So this uh, here, the first term is the uh, current going through that one ohm resistor at the top. And then this is obviously the current going through. The second term is the current going through the capacitor. So from this, we can get that VL is equal to V at T plus 1 twelfth. DV, T over DT. Uh, and we can sub this into our second, um, did I have a second one? This one that's by second. <laughs> and we're going to sub that into our second equation. So we have uh, 0 0.5 DIL over DT is equal to V at T plus 1 over 12 dv at t over dt. Are you so far so good? We can, well, we can then rewrite this just to isolate um, the derivative of il um, and get all of our terms on one side. Um, I did not mean to put a two there. That's my bad. Okay, now we're going to take the derivative of this. So this is all helping us get to 
to our uh, to being able to find our two roots. So we want to have only either only VT or only um, IT. So um, this is what we get when we take the derivative. Now we're going to take the derivative of number three, our third equation, which is up here, this one. Okay, and now we're going to uh, sub in our uh, I'm missing again. One sec. And we have one sixth. We're subbing in our um, this. Oh, that looks like an IC, but it's supposed to be an IL. Our uh, double derivative of IL from up here. We're going to sub that in. So we get. And then we're also going to sub in our um, up here, our um, single derivative for IL. So we're going to get and all of that is equal to negative five sine t. Uh, so now uh, this is going to be some rearranging so that we get uh, we want again a like polynomial, so a quadratic function. So we want to get our double derivative to be the first element and with no coefficients. So once we do that, we are going to have this equation. Negative 30 sine t. Okay, so from this next step, so we have written all of our, we've analyzed our circuit, found an equation that has um, only uh, via t in it. So now we're going to find our roots using the quadratic function. So we're going to find that S1 is negative three and S2 is negative four. So they're real and distinct which means that the system is over damped. So now uh, that means our natural response will be in this form. And now we're gonna work on the forcing function. So our forcing function is um, in this form. It's a sinusoidal. Um, it's our forcing function is up here. It's five cos t. So come back here. Uh, we can write our vf at t as a sine t plus b cosine t. Uh, 
Okay, and now uh, from this function from where we found our roots, we're going to sub in our forcing function in there and we're going to find That real quick. Okay. And what we are going to get in the end. Oh, it's quite long. Let me see if I can. Okay. Negative a sine t minus b. Cos t plus seven. So we are here taking the double derivative of our forcing function vf, um, then taking the um, first derivative of the forcing function here, and then just have our forcing function here as well. equal to negative 30 sine t. Okay, so doing a lot of um, uh, adding together, um, we are going to end up with, it's supposed to be a minus, Uh, sine t of 11a minus 7b plus cos t of 11b plus 7a is equal to negative 30 sine t. So that's um, opening up all of these um, brackets. Uh, and from this, with a bunch of math that I want right out here, but it's quite easy math. You're gonna get that B is 21 over 17, and you're gonna get that A is negative 33 over 17. Are we all good so far? So we can rewrite our forcing function like this, uh, subbing in our a and b. And then our overall v at t we can find with our natural response and our forced response. So all together, we have it in this form. Okay. Um, do you guys want me to go through finding A1 and A2 um, as well for this one or um, move on to another question? Sure, find the A1 and A2. Okay, so uh, then we're gonna, f oh, we can move on. Um, would you guys prefer? I'm fine with that. Move on. Okay, cool. So let's move on to another question. Uh, would you guys like to solve a couple inductor uh, question? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So let's uh, also find my notes for this. Okay. So let me just find the question and read it out for you guys. This is 11.9-3. Um, okay, so it says the source voltage of the circuit uh, shown is, um, I write it here, Vs equal to 141.4 cosine 100 T. And it's saying find I1 at T. 
and find I2 um, at T. So let's go back here. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do first is find our impedances and put it in, uh, put everything into a phasor form. So VS is easy. There's no um, offset, no phase shift. So we just have zero degrees. Um, our omega is 100. And now ZL1, L1 is the first inductor on the left here, the 0.4 H1. Um, sorry, the picture is so small. Unfortunately, I can't uh, extend it, make it bigger. Um, so we do this, which gives us that. ZL2 is the second inductor. It's the one on the right, the 1.6 H1. And so we get 160. And then we have uh, ZM, which is our mutual inductance, uh, which is this uh, 0 0.6 Henry. So this, we get J60. So um, I'm not going to redraw the circuit again, just because it takes some time, but uh, you can redraw it and replace all of the Henrys now with these um, impedances. Uh, and have everything in phasor form. Okay, so the first thing we do with um, coupled inductors, uh, make sure that you take note of where the dots are that uh, shows how the, uh, and like uh, which way the currents are shown. Um, because that's very important. Uh, and that will say which um, which equations we're going to use. So an important thing to notice, I am going to redraw them actually. Um, I2 here is going um, out. It's going uh, towards the resistor. Um, but in... Uh, the notes, let me just find the page number for you guys. If you want to find it, um, on page 532, um, you can see that uh, the N533, the equations that they give you are for when I2 is going um, into, like towards the inductor. So I'm going to be solving it this way and then I'm changing once I give the answer, I'll be going the other way so that we can use those equations and just not to worry about it too much. Okay, so those equations are, um, write them out, uh, V1. So V1 is uh, across L1. So across the voltage across your first uh, inductor on the left, V1 is equal to J omega L1 I1 plus J omega M I2. And V2 is, V2 is across the second inductor, is this. Okay, so uh, this is when the two dots are both in the same place. Uh, not opposites. Uh, if they were in opposites, we would have a minus sign, a subtraction, instead of an addition. So rewriting these for our circuit, we have V1 is J40 I1 plus J60 I2. V2 is J160 I2 plus J60 I1. Okay, and now that we have these two equations, uh, we need some more equations because we have four unknowns. We are going to do a KVL at, I'm going to call it loop one. It's uh, through the left side of the coupled inductor. Um, 
and we're going to get Okay, so this is the source. Then we have our resistor um, with I1. And then we have V1. And V1 is the, again, the voltage across the left inductor. Mm, okay, and we can rewrite that to get our first equation, which is going to be 141.4. Here degrees is equal to I1 times 2 plus J40 plus J60 I2. Okay, and now we're going to do another KVL at loop 2. Um, and from that, we're going to get negative V2 plus I2 200 equal to 0. So that's our... Um, our voltage from the right inductor and then our voltage across that resistor. Um, you can see here, oh, I put a plus. I meant to put a minus. Okay, this is important that it's a negative um, because if we look up here, it would be a plus if we were drawing our I2 this way. Uh, but we're not. We're drawing our, so if I draw this part here, this is our plus minus. We're doing a loop this way. So we are assuming that our I2 is actually going this way. So um, you can see that that would make our loop. This here would be I2 would be going up this way. So it'd be going into the negative. Yes, so that's why we have this equation. Um, from this, again, I'm not going to show. Uh, so you sub in your V2, uh, same as in the first one, you sub in your V1 that you found. Uh, so you're going to eventually get, uh, I'll write out this part, J60, 10 minus, J one sixty I one, and you'll find when you put this into um, polar form, that this is what you get. Uh, I two is zero point two three four with an angle of negative one twenty eight point sixty six times I one. So now we can sub this uh, equation that we got for I2, we can sub it into our first equation that we have. And this is a lot of um, changing from rectangular and polar form um, back, back and forth. So I'll write out the first one, which is this. Uh, so J60 um, can be written as 60 with a 90 degree angle. Um, and then we're going to write our formula for I2. Uh, and eventually, this is going to get us that I1 is 4.18, negative 67.8. 46 degrees. So basically what you're going to do, you're going to multiply these, uh, then you're going to add the two I1s, um, and then you're going to isolate for I1. Uh, does anybody want me to go through that math? Okay, cool. Uh, and then I2, uh, so we already have an equation for for I2 that we got from I1, uh, which is what we used. Um, it's here we have uh, 0, 2, 3, 4. So you're going to sub in your I1. Um, 
and I believe what I got, I apologize if there are any math errors in this. Um, so that gives us this answer, of course, we have to remember that it's going in the opposite direction, actually. Um, so, uh, yeah, so our I2 is going in while their I2 is going out. So let's make sure that you have a negative there. Um, I guess their I2 and T would be for us, and uh, we'll just see. Uh, this is my three. Yeah. Okay. Um, math error. Minus 50. Wait, do they actually take off 50% for a math error? I guess. Um, oh, is it? Oh, because it's multiple choice. Yeah, that's that's rough. Well, at least um, multiple choice. Hopefully, um, if yours doesn't fit any of them, you'll be like, oh, OK, so there's somewhere there's a math error. Um, I would suggest getting, I'm sure you guys already are just from circuit theory one, uh, but really practice going from polar to rectangular. I cannot tell you how many times, I, and I'm still not sure, uh, but how many times even when I was resolving this for this review, how many times I, uh, oh, that's good, have a calculator. Yes, see, that's right, I didn't know about that. Um, <laughs> No, it's primitive. <laughs> um, so I was doing all those calculations. Yes, I get a calculator that does it because there's a lot of them. Okay. Um, so the next question I have is from chapter 13, um, which I believe is frequency response. Are you guys good to move on to that? It's 926. Do you want to solve this one? Do you want to try a Laplace one? Or do you want to go straight to a Kahoot? Um, what would be helpful? I don't know. Did you guys do chapter 16? Okay. Is everybody feeling Kahoot? Yes? Okay. Let me find how to start it. Okay. Here is the Kahoot game plan. We have 11 people here, so live. Okay. 
word eight. I'll wait um, a minute or two more if anybody else wants to join. Oh, I guess one of them is me, actually. I'm in here twice, so. I think we're probably good to start. Somebody left. <laughs> Wait a little bit. I don't know if we get to start. Okay, um, so we're going to start the Kahoot. Is everybody ready? Everybody good to go? Um, these are pretty fast, so look at your phone. Uh, um, the person who wins the Kahoot gets a $5 Amazon gift card. Okay, I am starting it. Okay. Awesome. Next question. Okay, so we do know this equation current uh, through a capacitor depends on its voltage. On to the next question. Assume the response of the force and function k t squared. Awesome, yeah. So it's, uh, it's usually very similar to the force function, uh, the, the force and function. So have the t squared as well. Okay, uh, next question. Oh, was that it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm sure there was more. Yeah, so it's a um, addition of the sine and cosine of omega t. Um, Juan, you are killing it. All right, next question. Yeah, so it's uh, critically damped. It's actually the um, the one we just did uh, was critically damped. Okay. So here is first. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing anyone's name. Please let me know. Okay, next question. Six out of seven. So one more after this. So under damped is uh, when you have your oh um I just realized there's two questions that I think they both have the same oh no they don't yeah so one is cosine one is sine I just can't read yeah so that is the correct one for under damped um. Okay, so those are when you have um, imaginary roots. 
Okay, next. Okay, Juan is back in the lead. And this is our last question coming up. Yeah, that is the correct one. All right, so who, is our, who are our winners? Awesome, congratulations, MC or Mick. I'm going to stop sharing, uh, please. Send me your email in the chat. You can send it as a private message to me, MC Nick. Perfect. Thank you. Let me just uh, write that down so that I don't lose it. Okay, cool. So we will be sending you the Kahoot $5 gift card, the Amazon gift card. Um, all right, if uh, you guys are all good, if you want me to go through any of the other questions, let me know. If not, we'll end it here. All right, thank you guys.